so you've got your loom. These looms are open. The first one I did for my sample, I didn't have open like that. And I just found it harder to work with. Um, you will have these extra strings that are on the back here that we'll be weaving in also then. So I will show how you start with this. I kind of just tucked mine in really tight into it, but if it's not gonna hold, you might wanna tape it. And I've just got some regular tape. And this is what you weave into. You could theoretically use something that isn't this string. You could use just regular yarn or whatever you want. So this one is, it's pretty hidden by everything, but you can kind of see it here in those little areas here. Um, and that also has to do with how many strands you're going to go with. So you see there's notches all the way around. You don't have to do all of those notches. You could uh, choose to do less of them. So you could like skip to every round. So you're just going to go to the one that matches up with it on the other side. And then you're going to go to the next one like here, or if, if you're choosing to have less, you can go here or here. You just wanna make it like the same amount that you're skipping each time. So it's kind of an even number. It, it'll show up less in if you skip more. So I'm actually gonna do the skipping some this time. And you'll see it's starting to form the center area here too. And when we get ready to work on it, we'll actually start with like tying this so that it is one center piece. You can see here that I did that tie right there. Yeah, you don't want to do it too tight that you're bending your okay. And then when you get to your last one, you can just cut it off and tape it in place like and you can take either this kind of string or you can take some of the yarn to tie that middle. Um, I think I'm going to do the yarn just as a like, contrasting color. And I'm just cutting a small length of mine. So you'll kind of figure out how best to gather your middle here. I'm going to say this is probably pretty good for mine. And you'll want to just take if you're doing yarn or you can use the white here that same kind of string if you've got more left and put it on your needle to tie our center. And you just run it through. And I'm actually on my front, so I probably don't want a knot that's gonna show up on the front. So I will tuck it in after. Tie it as a knot. So I just pushed my tail to the other side at this point. And then I'm going to actually make an X and pull the other side in too. And this is just helping us kind of manage all those strings so that they're all in a central order. And I actually cut it way longer than it even needed to be because that's about all I need for that. But I can con continue with this piece of yarn and just start weaving or I can switch to a different color. And I will actually switch to a different color. I'm going to then go to the back of it and knot it again so that it stays 
can't hold it in place. And I'm gonna cut those long because I'll weave them in later once we're finished. Let's see, this is a nice bright color. So I cut another strand. I didn't make it too long, but you can make it longer if you wanna do something that is the same color for a long amount of time. Um, and I would suggest using some of the thinner yarns at this point. Um, the thicker yarns might be a little hard to get into these smaller spaces. So I'm just using the regular, what you would usually think of yarn size, but you can also use a thinner one if you've got some of those in your supplies. I'm gonna go back to the back and just choose a line of it to go under and tie a knot so that we can hold it in place. And I'm gonna just put it in so that it's into the front. So at this point, this is when the weaving actually starts. Everything before this was just building what you're going to work on. Um, so just for the basic weaving, you're going to go under and over, under and over, back and forth, all the way around. So the needle really helps you get in there. I am going to have this section right here that is a lot of the white just because I have a lot of strings and you'll also have that going on. And then my last one I just did was an over so I'm going to go under on this one. It's easier to work on this outside area than it is in the middle since it's so tight in there. And I can just Yes, under both of these. So one of these is a single thing. And this one's only a single one. It doesn't have both because of the way that I, I counted mine out. I did all of the loops for this one and it, it turns out fine too. And this was done with all the thinner yarns. I'll use that one as a sample of showing how to finish your work. And we'll just keep working around. And once you kind of get comfortable doing that, you can do all kinds of other kind of stitches. So like on that first one that I did as a sample, I kind of stopped and then started working back the other direction, doing just certain patches of certain colors. And so like this one, I could choose to go back the other way now, just at this point. And then the way I got the other colors in was I just worked them also. Um, so like I, I would work up to a point up here. I'm gonna get a little farther on this. And when I'm working this way, you want to make sure that 
the stitches, I guess they're not really stitches, the weaving is the opposite of what you had. So here I kind of did the same as what I had. I got off of the pattern because otherwise it's just kind of sit in between all the strings instead of actually getting that weave look to it. You go over and then under. Okay. That's where I messed up. And you can also use your needle to kind of push it inwards towards that center. When you're doing like the traditional weaving in the rectangle form, there's like a bar that you use to push down to get that kind of result. And you can just be creative with this. You can do completely just circles or you can do that weaving back and forth, uh, mixing and matching your different weights of yarn and styles of yarn that we have in these kits. There's really no wrong or right way to do it. Now I'm going back the other way on this one. And that's how I was able to build up some of it in one area, but not the other was basically you just turn around. And then I'll show what you can do to add in that other color. So I'm just pulling my needle off of this one. I can come back to it later and then continue doing what I'm doing. But say I want to add in a different color. I'll cut whatever length I want. I don't like to work with too long of a length because then it just kind of gets tangled. I'm gonna, once again, from the back, take and start it off and knot it. On one of the strings. And then I'm going to send it on to the front. And I started it right where I left off on the purple. And then I'll just start weaving just like before. Back and forth. And when I meet up with where the purple is, I'm actually going to make sure that I stitch into where the purple meets the color that I'm currently working with. So you see there's kind of a space here. I'm just gonna 
stick that in and then bring my needle so that it comes back this other way. And I can push down once again to tighten. Um, if you don't stitch into the last one that you worked on of the previous color, it's gonna create a separation. So like say here, I didn't do any of that. It would just come apart between these two colors. And here again, I'm making sure to include where I stopped at with the purple on that side. And I could actually go past where the purple starts to get that kind of overlapping area. And these tails, I can kind of start working in also, so that they're not going to show up later. The other option would be just to have a back side to it that you turn those tails off then. but you can work on the end to your piece as well. Now you can also choose to do, instead of your regular weaving of one over, one below, you could do two over and two below. It just, it'll change up your pattern a little bit and make it look a little different. Yep, that's two, that's two, or you could do two and one. direction mark. So here I've done two as opposed to the ones that are everywhere else. And then you can also choose to do things like looping your project. So like you would leave some extra Space. I've seen that done in just some techniques. So you'd leave some extra yarn and then loop it around. Leave that loose. And for my next one, again, leave it loose again.
And that's kind of what I did on my, the tree piece here. So I included those into the kit too. You can just get creative with them. I put extra yarn or extra of this along the outside and then just sewed around it to get that black edge. I kind of thought of it as like, it, it's like the ocean here. And then I just thought it was pretty. because I think I've woven in enough at this point. That way it's not in my way anymore. And there's some of the yarn that it's like, if you got any of the this kind, it kind of pulls apart. So I was only using like small bits of that. And you can technically without using the needle, just kind of weave it with your hands if that's easier for some, some of the yarns, especially the really thick yarn. You can just do that and kind of push it in. When I realized I've boxed in the brown, so I should probably tie that off where it's at. So when I'm tying off the color, I can actually just use the needle and put it through some and it's woven in already. So here I am just doing some of that really delicate yarn, weaving that in by hand. It's up against the purple, so I do wanna still make sure that it's not gonna split between it. So I wanna use the needle carefully on that end piece to pull it in there. There we go. piece you can just take and tie it on to any of the nails and then just like before you're just going to wrap it around and I got to remember how I did it <laughs> yeah I wrapped it around and then I went to the next one so you're going to have an outside edge on this one and then you go across and go to the next one and across and go to the next one and across. And then when you've already done all of the crosses, you can kind of just do that outside edge of it and then tie it off. Um, and then with this one, you can just kind of shove those ends in there because you're not going to be taking it off of it and you can just work it in there it will be a little bit more fiddly because you're kind of working with you got this back piece to put your needle against but i thought it was fun to do and turns out really neat um and then 
at the very end, when I was done with it, I actually took a hammer and kind of pushed it in a little more because I left it out. So I had some space to work, but I pushed it down once I was done with that. Let me do that. And you would do the same thing you did before with the um, other one for the center. You just tie that center. There's a lot less pieces. Yeah, I actually went all the way around it like that. It actually kind of ends up like an octagon. So I'm actually using the needle to help me tie this end piece because I was finding it hard to tie. And then there's my knot. I'm just going to tuck that in there because it can magically disappear. Maybe trim it a little. There we go. Yeah, and to tie the center of this one, I would just use what yarn I'm starting with because it's not really going to. Just using my needle. I tie it once again. Tuck in those ends. And then just start weaving around. We've got a lot of less of them to work with. So your weft isn't as visible this time. That's why it doesn't show up at all in this one, especially with this kind of fuzzier yarn. Yeah, and your loom will be reusable actually. So when you're finished with your piece, what you'll do is you'll take and cut these strings. And then you'll just end up tying these. And that'll fold it in place. Now you can either, if you wanna just leave them, they can be kind of like a fringe, and you can trim them, or you can take your, you might need a little smaller needle for this, um, depending on where you cut it. And just weave them in carefully. So like I wove it in there, and then just trim it. So you could do that or you could leave it as a fringe. Depends on the look that you're going for. You could also get really creative with it and then macrame the ends. Um, that was what was usually done with like Turkish rugs. They would have these ends that they finished and then they just macrame them to give it an even more finished look. So you can also see here on my back of this, this is all my tails that I had. And I think most of these are knotted, so I should be able to just trim them. Yep, that's worked in as I was going. And then all I have to do is tie all of these around. And then 
you would be able to start over again with your loom, put a new loft down there and do a different project. And we do have in the makerspace a loom set that can be used. It's a looser loom. And that one's kind of more of a, a flat kind of one. But we also have one of the circular looms for knitting too that are usable in the makerspace. Now here's a picture of what it looks like. You can make stuff that kind of looks like that. And you can always make more of your own blooms. You can do square ones or other shapes. I've even seen people use branches to weave in. So they just tie the string on and then work between the branches. So it's like a branch that kind of V's out. And then they do sell looms that are a little more durable if you really want to get into it. <laughs> but when you've got cardboard, I don't know why you want to invest too much into it unless you're producing a lot of like rugs and things. Another thing you could do if you're kind of doing more of the wall hanging route is you can actually just take a piece of yarn, just take a piece of yarn and loop, them, loop in some knots. So I'm gonna just go this way actually. And then just tie it as a knot and have it be a tassel. And this is what you would use for needle felting, but they've got it, it's made into more of a yarn because it's pulled out. So like, they're just weaving it in. Kind of like that. So you could use some of the roving from the needle felting project that in a future circle weaving. And they're twisting it. That's a really chunky yarn basically. Yeah, the one thing I can tell you about roving though is it's not going to like stay together if you throw it in a washer or something. Um, and like when it's when people use it for knit and crochet projects, it's going to look nice for a little bit and then it's going to start falling apart. It's not a it's not something that is going to stay forever. Um, but if you're doing it like as a wall hanging kind of thing, that's just going to stay on the wall and it's not going to get moved around. So it'll stay nice. Um, and like the needle felt project, that'll stay nice because you've agitated it and put it together so that it, it's supposed to stay in one piece. And also it's something that you're not moving around constantly. But like the crochet and knitted blankets with roving are what fall apart. Get even more creative and like, you could cut out old clothing and use that. You could use plastic bags that you cut into pieces. Um, you could also do more of a natural route if you wanted to weave like plant pieces. That will, that will eventually um, deteriorate, but that is something that you could do just as a temporary artwork.
you could take um, this and do it on a embroidery hoop and then you just hang up the embroidery hoop instead of with the cardboard. You just run the strings through. But you could also transfer your piece to that from one of these blooms if it's something that you want to hang up. I had I took and made it so it was a little less woven together so I thought it kind of looked silly as a regular yarn not a bulky yarn it kind of makes it more look look more like a normal tassel mm -hmm. 